All right, this lead code question is called valid perfect square. It says given a positive integer num, write a function which returns true if num is a perfect square or else return false. Note, do not use any built-in library functions such as square root. So the first example is the number 16 and we'd return true because four times four is 16. But the second example is the number 14 and we return false because no number multiplied by itself is 14. All right, let's say we were trying to decide whether nine was a perfect square. What does that really mean? All it really means is we're asking if one of the numbers from one to nine squared would give us nine. So would one squared be nine, would two squared be nine, would three squared be nine, and so on and so on. One way we could do this is by using binary search. In binary search, we divide our data set into halves. If the left half is too small to contain the solution, we check the right half. And we do that over and over until we find our solution. All right, so we know our solution has to be one of the numbers from one through nine. And if it's not, then this is not a valid perfect square. So what we do is divide our data set into halves. So we'd say this is the midpoint. Now we square the midpoint and see if it is our answer. Is five squared equal to nine? No, it's not. It's greater than nine. So what we can do is we can eliminate this entire half of our data set because every number in that half squared is greater than nine. So now we only have to check the left half of our data set. We'll do it again. What's the midpoint of these numbers? It's two. Is two squared equal to nine? No, it's not. It's less than nine. So now we can eliminate this half of our data set because every number in that half of the data set is too small. So now we're left with just the numbers three and four. So we find the midpoint, which is the number three, and we square it. Does that equal to nine? Yes, it does. So that's our answer. All right, let's get to the code. What lead code has given us is a function called is perfect square, which accepts a number that we're supposed to determine whether or not is a perfect square. So right off the bat, we know that if the number that's passed in is less than one, it cannot be a perfect square because the first perfect square is one. So we'll say if num is less than one, we return false. But if num is one, we can return true. All right, what we can do next is we can create two variables. One will hold the leftmost point in our data set and the other will hold the rightmost point, which will equal at first the number. So we'll say let left is one and let right equals num. That would look like this. This is left and this is right. Now we'll use binary search to narrow down our data set. We'll say while left is less than or equal to right, and then we can add our logic here. So the first thing we need to do to cut our data set in half is to find the midpoint. We'll say let mid equal left plus math.floor, right minus left, divided by two. That's just a good formula to remember in order to find the midpoint of two numbers. We can use our data set real quick. So it says mid equals left, left is one plus right minus left, right is nine, left is one, and you would divide that by two and round that down. So that would be one plus eight divided by two, which is one plus four, which is five. So our midpoint would be five. All right, let's get rid of that. Okay, so now we check if our midpoint squared equals our target number. We'll say if mid times mid 
equals our number, then we'll just return true because that means our number is a valid perfect square. But in our case, if you multiply the midpoint by itself, it's greater than our number. So we have to add a case for that. We say else mid times mid is greater than num. What do we have to do? We'll have to shift our right pointer and set it to mid minus one. Why is that? Because our midpoint is already too large. So what we'll do is we'll reassign our right pointer to whatever number is just left of our midpoint. So what we're saying is that we're now narrowing our data set to this. All right, so let's go to the next loop. When we find the midpoint, it will be the number two. We'll square two and see if it's equal to nine. It's not, it's less than nine. So now we know that we can eliminate the left half of our data set. We can do that by saying else, oops, this needs an if statement. All right, else if mid times mid is less than our num, we'll shift our left pointer. So we'll say left equals mid plus one. So because our midpoint is too low, we will now just shift our left pointer to whatever is to the right of it. So now our data set has been narrowed down to these two numbers. All right, so now the next while loop starts and it finds the midpoint. The midpoint in this case is the number three goes into the first if statement and checks if three times three equals our target number, which is nine, and yes it does, so that's our answer. All right, so we're pretty much done. All we have to do is add one more case at the end. We'll say return false. So what this takes care of is the case where our number is not a valid perfect square. So what it does is it cuts our data set in half until the numbers are exhausted meaning that none of them is the square root of our number. So we'll just return false, meaning it's not a valid perfect square. All right, so let's run the code, see how we did. Looks good, let's submit. All right, so our solution was faster than about 92% of other JavaScript submissions. As usual, the code and written explanation are linked down below. If you liked the video, give it a like and subscribe to the channel. It helps out a lot. See you next time.